Okay, let's look at a more complex one, and this has a larger uh, footprint. So, to uh, take a look at how this would translate into the, the same same techniques would translate for this object. So we're going to take this down and across. Now we have to make this, okay, so you can think of it that way. I give myself plenty of room here because this is pretty, this object's pretty wide. And so I'm going to take this, the farthest absolute distance here. And give myself that mark. Give myself that mark. Okay. And double check this. That. Yep. Okay. And um, just make sure my box is pretty square. Bring this down. So here we are again using without the dot line um, exercise would not be. It's just an exercise. Here you're doing it all the time. Just give myself an just even a surface there. I make sure that these are even too, so you have a pretty square box. It helps with accuracy. Good. So that is our bounding box for this object. So now we can do a number of things. Uh, we know that the this is the bottom here. I'm going to go look at major lines. Like I'm not going to worry about the circle yet. I'm going to look at the, where these points are. Um, Especially once it touch the edge, but it's difficult because this whole side is that is part of that circle. So um, if we uh, if we kind of if we come down here, all right, we can look at it this way. We can take that edge in. And that becomes a point there. So. <clears throat> We also know that on this height, the height from there, this is about where that edge comes in. So, okay. So that is, this point touches pretty much the outside edge. So that helps us find this, but I'm not going to do that's not a, the entire line because remember this this comes down and creates that edge. So we'll figure that out later. This is, this actually comes up and hits somewhere along this edge and the, the curve points there. So just I'm just getting this stuff uh, situated for right now. I can check out where this line goes from above here because I've since I've plotted that out, it's somewhere in this. Point, okay. So we come in here. Um, got that plotted out. We um, we can take this. We can take this line across. Just get an approximate distance here. can establish where this horizontal is. It's that horizontal is approximately there. Okay. <clears throat> so this one you can't start finalizing the drawing too soon. You want um, to give yourself some reference points to where things are. And this is how you might handle a more complicated drawing. So we're getting we're getting some of this stuff um, just situated where these points are. So now that we have this point, then we can establish the bottom of this. So there's that. Okay. And 
this being pretty much uh, looks like horizontally arranged right across from one another, we can get this distance. It's a good thing about geometric objects. We can get this distance right across here. Should be right on this horizontal. And each time you're practicing these diagonals. Let me see this diagonal here. Let's see if that one's right. That one's not quite right. This might be any farther. This is why you draw lightly the first time around. Keep it in case you make mistakes. Yeah, I think that works out better. Okay, and then, so we have that set up. So we have our box around here. We can bring this corner across. So we have a way to navigate this. This point is somewhere here. We can check the height of that. Yeah, it's a little bit higher. So somewhere in this zone, that point is. We can bring this down and extend that line through to where it hits here on this horizontal and just use that as a reference point so from here down through here, that creates that line. Okay, not def deciding on anything yet. Any one thing, taking this straight across. You see how that's floating out in the middle of nowhere. So how do you know where that is unless you have some reference point for it? Okay. We do have this reference point, and we also can figure this one out. So that one comes over here, and it intersects that one, and comes here. So I have that in the right place. You can tell by your relationship and the angle. So that angle comes across. That's correct. I want to do this one. Just to finalize it. So it comes up here, intersects there. Remember, this is not, just gets erased. Okay, but this line is part of the equation. And we have an arc that starts here. We won't deal with that yet. And this, that's going to get erased. Okay, so you can start to see how this is forming. Right. Much more complicated. We have this as this looks like it is a possible angle. Okay. So I'm not sure if that's from my point of view doing this recording. I don't know if that's the same, so I'm going to check that. Looks like it is. So this is the same all the way across, so we can pretty much determine that that's on that line. And then we can come in from this edge here and get that point. That looks like I'm pretty good with that. So that line. The more you can establish your horizontals and verticals, the better. And then you get your angles. Okay? So I tried to get as many horizontals as I could. There's really no verticals in here. 
um, but I do have some angles. And now we know this, I plotted this idea, uh, this point four, and there's this, this kind of curve comes in like this, um, slightly off of that, that point comes slightly off of, on that diagonal, which goes to that point, this point out here. So I'm checking this angle Again, make sure you're holding still, trying to get that as still as possible. Looks like I'm a little bit off. These are closer together, actually. Based on the angle, this point is more down here. So we'll just, there's my point line. Point line. Destination. Okay. I can also check this. This that looks pretty good. Might be a little bit higher. Somewhere in there. Good. All right. So going for really trying to get an accurate portrayal of this object, so we are um, getting there. And this just starts to do this. I want to get ahead of myself though, that's the curve is the more complex and difficult um, thing to account for. So, got some sunshine coming through, creating an issue, let me change that. Nice thing about having a sunlit studio. Okay. All right. So, notice I'm not guessing at anything. I'm not making any guesses as to how this thing looks. Um, there's no approximations. I am trying to measure for everything here and uh, see that it works. Okay. So, the next thing is I'm going to try to get this point here so I can kind of take a either this segment straight down. Try to drop things on horizontals um, and verticals. So if I align this with that point, it's, it's over this way. It's over that, that way somewhere in here. Probably that's pretty close. I can check my angle. Angle. So, what side of the pencil you want to use? So, if I since I drop this straight down from that line, this will be pretty close. That right? No, there. You make that correction. Take this. Follow that. Okay. Okay. So this should approximately be, if it's a, if it is truly the right object, this should approximately be halfway. That point should be halfway here to there. This, this. So it's pretty close. A little bit off. I'm going to push this angle out slightly before I finalize my drawing. Looking at it, so it looks, this looks symmetrical. 
the other thing that's confusing is that circle goes through here too. All right. So <clears throat> now I think we have everything lined up. We have that angle, that angle. Oh, we have this angle. That's doing that. That's going there. We've got this shape. So the last thing to do is, is form our circle. So it looks like the bottom of the circle is just slightly below here. And you want to, what we have is a, is a square. Since we have this circle, we have another envelope inside this envelope. You have to account for that. But we'll help you with the circle. Okay, so here's our envelope. And this, and this should be this should be pretty much a square. Which I don't know why it's not. That's not the square. Doing that wrong. That's the envelope of the square. Here we go. Oh, I was getting hung up on that. <clears throat> okay. By double checking yourself, you avoid some of those mistakes. Especially when something like this gets kind of complex. Okay. So now that's, you can see this square here, and this is my, um, you know, your circle touches at the halfway point of, of a square, okay? So that's where the circle touches. If I come down here, it's gonna be a touch there. And if I come, right, there's the touch right here. It's like this. Okay, so now I have this arc. I'm going to bring this arc through. We'll stay light. Stay light in your touch. So you can make corrections. Remember, this comes through and around. It hugs this line pretty long and then comes through and around, and then this one. through and around. Okay. So now to finalize the, these shapes, we use our less sketchy line. Here, this got a little too sketchy. Yeah. Not a bad circle for freehand. And then this comes down here. at this, making our final lines. Yeah. 
pressing too hard and breaking my pencil. Careful about that. Okay, now if you have the eraser and you want to clean this up, uh, once you get in the habit of this process, you can see how in the process we start with a very light drawing. We really establish the horizontals and verticals first. Find where your curves are at the end. Once you have all these things lined up, then you finalize the drawing. Okay. All right. So there's the there's the drawing of that figure, which is a rather this is pretty complex. So, all right. Um, hope that helps.